For this part of the tutorial, we're going to learn how to animate images. You can see the Space Invaders characters that we've chosen are the same the whole game, but in the true Space Invaders, these images alternate back and forth while the aliens are flying in the sky, and we're going to try to replicate that behavior. So, what I've done is I've done a little bit of Photoshop here where I've taken the aliens, and you can see how I have a bunch of different images, and I called the image for Alien A. I didn't just call it Alien A, I called it Alien A underscore 1, and the reason for that when I did that a while back was because I knew that this was coming. And now I have this image, which is Alien A2. Similarly, I've got Alien B right here, and I've got Alien B underscore 2. So for Alien A, essentially, I've got two images. B, I've got two images, and Alien C, I've got two images. And what I want to do is I want to associate those images with each of the aliens. So I'm going to focus on Alien A for this one. And what I'm going to do is go into Alien A's code. And there's not much to Alien A. All we're doing is we're scaling Alien A every time we create Alien A. It gets put on the screen in another place. And all of the code for its movement and everything is in the Alien class, which we've gone over in a previous video. But what we want to do is we want to write some code that's going to associate images with this alien. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call the first image A1, and I'm going to call the second one A2. So this is what it's going to look like. Copy, paste, A2. Now, what I'm doing is I'm writing the code that is going to create what's called a Greenfoot image. And Greenfoot, the Greenfoot image I'm making here is going to be called A1. And the Greenfoot image I'm going to make here is going to be called A2. I left these blank because what I'm going to put in here is the file name that's going to result in A1. So when I type alien A underscore 1, this line of code here means that this image, alien A1, that image right there, is essentially going to become that variable. And this is going to become that variable. So we've already kind of done it here. Oh, sorry, I forgot. <laughs> I forgot something. I'd like to say I did that on purpose. For learning but I didn't I forgot the extension I forgot dot PNG because you do have to put the file type so whatever you're putting in these quotes as you can see there it has to be exactly the file name along with the extension so I've got PNGs you could also have JPEGs or GIFs or GIFs or whatever you want to say but make sure that you include the file extension now I don't think I'm going to get that nasty error anymore. Yep, there we go, I'm back. So nothing changed. I haven't done anything yet. All I've really done is and I've told the computer that Alien A, every Alien A that I create has two images associated with it, A1 and A2. And when we set Alien A, when we made the class, we set the image so that to start, it always started with that image. So I can see that when the game starts, it's automatically going to start with A1. What I want to do is I want to make it go back and forth between the two images. So I have a constructor, but I don't have an act method. So I need to write an act method where I can change the images that belong to alien A. Now I'm going to make an act method. And the way I do that is like this. Anything I put in here will happen over and over and over again for alien A. That's the definition of an act method. And when I put code in here, what I want to do is I want to switch the images back and forth. I'm going to put that code in here. And what you're going to see is it's not going to work the way we think it is. I'm going to fix it, but um, don't be alarmed when it doesn't work. So. Here's the code that we need. Animation is really not that hard. Basically what it is, is we're switching images from one to the other. So if the image is A1, we want it to be A2. And then after that, if the image is A2, we want it to switch to A1. 
and it's just this endless loop of switching images. So the code is going to be if I get the image of the alien and it turns out that it's a one. And by the way, this double equal sign, this means compare. So I get the current image of alien A. If it is a one, then what I want to do is set the image of the alien to be a two, like so. Else, and I can leave it like that. I can just put the word else because the only other case is that it would be a two. So if the image is a one, we want to set it, the image to be a two. Else, in other words, if the image is a two, we want to set the image to a one. So it goes back and forth. If we check the image, it's a one. Okay, set it to a two. We go and do it again. If we get the image and it's not a one, that means it must be a two. So now set it to be a one. And every time we do this, we want to scale the image to make sure it stays the same size. And you'll notice I put that outside of the if statement because it doesn't matter what image I set it to, I want to scale whatever image I put on the screen. Now I'm going to run it and you're going to see it's not going to work. <laughs> see how we have them just flapping up and down? So what happened is I, I did everything right. The code is working and we have some animation. But the act method that we just wrote for alien A just took over from the act method that we had here for alien in general. Remember, alien is the super class. It is kind of like the, the parent class of alien A, alien B, and alien C. We still want alien A to do all of this stuff. We want all of the aliens to do all of this stuff. So by writing that act method that I just wrote, it's not wrong, but it kind of took over. And that's why when I run it, it's animating, but it's not shooting and it's not moving. So that's not good. But luckily, there's a simple fix. All I have to do is go back into the act method and I type super. And notice I type super, it's blue. That means that Greenfoot identifies it's a special word, and it means it's referring to the super class. If I type super dot and then control space, look, act. So what that means is I can actually call the act method of the super class, and then I can do my animation stuff. So in other words, alien A has its own act method, but part of it is the act method that we wrote in the super in here. So every time alien A acts, it's going to use the act method that we wrote right here, and then it's going to do the animate or the uh, yeah the animation code. So now what we should see is both. We should see the movement, the shooting, and it should be switching images. There we go. Just waiting for shooting, and here we go. Okay, great, it's working. Now, you can see that the animation is kind of rough. Um, what we can do to smooth that out is we know how to use timers. And in fact, if we think about it, we don't have to write it from scratch. We can go to somewhere where a timer was used, like in the hero, and go, okay, well, we want to take this timer and we want to put it in alien A. Now why am I giving alien A a timer? Well, I'm not going to have a shot timer here, but what I am going to have is an animation timer. And the animation timer is going to control how often we switch the images back and forth. So all of this stuff here is for animation. What I want to do is say only switch the image, I don't know, every second? Let's try that. So here I'm going to write if animation timer dot and then control space millis elapsed. So if the number of milliseconds elapsed is over 1000, that means it's time to animate, time to switch the images. So I'm going to put all this stuff forward. I just pressed tab there, by the way. 
So only after the timer gets to a certain amount do I want to do that switch of images. And that means that the very last thing I want to do in here is reset the animation timer the same way I did when we were learning shooting. So I would use dot mark for that one. And also when I create the alien, I should get in the habit of just when it, when it gets created, it's a good idea to reset the timer like so. Okay, so that little bit should just control the timer by saying okay or control the animation by saying only switch the images every second and that time might not be what we want but let's try it and see what it looks like and you can see the top row is animating and it might be a little too slow so we can change that we can go back to alien a and good programming practice maybe i'll make an integer called um, annie oops any delay or animation delay and let's set it to be 750 three quarters of a second and I copy that and I put it right there okay and run and there we go we've got the top space invader animating and they're shooting and I can still just make sure I can get rid of the one on the top there and there we go I did so there you go, animation. So animation is, is not complicated in terms of how it's done. If it's one image, make it a different one. If it's a different one, make it the original one. That's, that's it. It's just the coding is a little different. You have to make sure that you associate images with each one. And then of course, in the way that we've constructed things, we had to make sure that we didn't just override the act method of the alien superclass. So now that you know how to do alien A, you should be able to copy this exact method and do the same thing for B and C. Okay, good luck.